Okay, here's our 1928 Model A, and this thing is awesome. Right off assembly line, probably would hit you for around $385 to $400. Yeah, and they had a lot of variants, everything from coupes to roadsters to pickup trucks. Yeah. In those four years, from 28 to 31, they sold almost 4.8 million rides. Wow. But you would towed around town and get about 25 to 30 miles to a gallon. With a whopping 40 horsepower. <laughs> now, this one started out as a coupe. It's been chopped about six inches. It's got sort of a 30s, 40s, jalopy sort of hot rodder look to it. The fenders are gone. We've got truck brackets holding up the headlights. And if we step over here into my office, you can tell this is a 1928, you know, by this red steering wheel here. Now, the Model A was really interesting because it was a leap forward from the 18 years they made the Model T. It had the first sort of modern pedal arrangement. You've got a clutch pedal, You've got a brake pedal, kind of like you think, and then you've got a throttle pedal or maybe a button over here. That's just a dead pedal. And it came with a three-speed with reverse, and you've got a parking brake. But what's interesting about these cars is some of the things that carried over from the Model T days on the upper end. So we've got spark control on this lever. So you're actually the PCM controlling your spark advance. You've got throttle over here, kind of redundant. A lot of guys call it... Um, it's cruise control because you can kind of set it, let your foot off, and go the speed you want, maybe a little bit slower or faster. Now over here you've got the choke. Now you'd pull this out, you crank the engine over about two half turns, and when you put it back in, then you actually turn it and you set your air fuel ratio as you're driving, depending on the conditions and what the engine wants. So again, you're the computer, you are telling the engine what to do, and we'll let Willie show you what's on the other side of this firewall. Another thing they did in the Model A's was move the gas tank up here to the top. The old Model T's had a gas tank underneath the passenger seat. There's stories of guys actually having to drive uphill backwards to get fuel to the carburetor. So you got this gravity fed situation that comes down here. Now Kev was talking about how you control that fuel ratio actually on the basically the cruise control on the column, right? So that is this lever right here. You see it function here. Here's the choke lever and the air fuel mixture. You pull it out, it shuts this butterfly valve right here so you can prime the car, give it a couple turns. So you turn that and it turns this little air fuel ratio in here. It's also talking about on the steering column how you could advance or retard spark and that was the problem with a lot of these cars or a lot of these people they would forget to retard that spark go and start it with the starter and they would shear the pan off in the starter so that little lever on the steering column just simply did this right here advance to retard the timing and on this one we actually have some chewed up teeth on the flywheel so we're gonna have to go and start it manually he's been pushing this car for the last two years off and on trying to get this thing to bite. So we're gonna take this thing apart, address those teeth that are chewed up on the flywheel, and see if we can't get it where you can start it every time with a little button. Now before we tear this thing apart, we're gonna show you the old school method of crank starting it. Now the first thing you wanna do is put your spark up here, this is retarded. Too much advance is what causes that kickback, which can break the shear pin on the starter or your wrist. Now we're gonna give it a little gas. We're gonna make sure our ignition is off for the time being. And then I'm gonna hold the choke closed so when Willie gives it two sort of pulls, it's priming that carburetor. A lot of times you'll see fuel dribble out of it. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and do that. And he said pulls, and that's very important. You always wanna make sure that you have your, your thumb underneath that handle and you pull from this motion like this. You don't wanna be on the receiving end of that compression kickback. One. All right, now that we've got it primed, I can open the choke back up. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna turn my ignition on. You gotta be careful, because you could get a waste spark. So if you've got the right conditions in the engine, you've got air fuel, you're on a compression stroke, sometimes you get a freebie and it starts all on its own. So we'll turn this guy on. Imagine doing this no. in the winter, Detroit, 1929. Come on. Look at that, son. <laughs> That's how they used to do it back in the 20s and 30s. <laughs> And what's really neat is you can come over here now. Ah, start advancing the spark, it gets happy. Yeah. Then you can back off the fuel because you're more efficient by adding that spark. So you can play around with this thing and come over here and do your trim. Get this thing sailing <laughs> yeah. down the road. All right, Willie, I think I got the last my bell housing bolts on my side. How are you looking? Good, got them out on my side, got the motor mouse out. I think we're ready to pop this little sucker out. All right, well, hey, welcome back. We've got our 28 Model A Ford. Yeah. Really cool coupe, chop top. 
But you know, we got a little bit of starting issues. Yeah, it's got a flywheel. Some of the teeth are chewed up, right? So sometimes he goes and cranks it, it works, and other times it's a hit and miss. Yeah, so it's either a push or a crank, <laughs> yeah. you know, risk an arm and limb. So we're gonna fix that problem. We've already got, you know, all the fenders and everything. Well, we've got all the top, we've got the radiator out, we've got everything disconnected, and I think we're ready to pull this guy out. And you can see we're kind of going a little bit of old yeah. school, like <laughs> back in the day, you probably would have had, you know, wooden A-frame, yep. you know, some rope and a block and tackle. Remember that in the yard? <laughs> little hydraulics, little ratchet straps. We're going to cradle this guy right out. All right. Okay, give it a couple of pumps here. And I'll wiggle. All right. All right. Sweet. Okay. Looking pretty good. We'll get this thing out and start right. looking at that flywheel. So we got it out, and it didn't take long for us to see some really chewed up teeth on this flywheel. Look at that guy. <laughs> yeah, doesn't sound pretty, doesn't necessarily want to start that way. So we'll go ahead and start pulling this clutch apart. And it's actually pretty conventional by what we, you know, we're familiar with these modern days. So amazing that this clutch design has been around, maybe modified a little bit for, you know, almost 100 years. So we're gonna pull this guy apart, we'll have a clutch friction plate in there. And they had single and they had multi-disc clutches, depending on application or configuration. Trucks or something, right? Yeah. Now, what's interesting about these flywheels, I think they're in the neighborhood of like 75 pounds or some massive amount. It's just a little four-banger engine, but that's why the flywheel is so heavy. Is once you get that thing moving, it's really hard to stall out. Like, say, in these things, you get stuck in the mud or whatever, it won't stall out. So you get all that mass whirring, and it helps you keep that momentum. All right. So let's pull that. Dude off. All right, we got our friction clutch dude yep. here. So, looks like that's been replaced at some point. That's, that's actually not bad. Too bad, but look at um, the safety wire. Yeah, and a lot of these are safety wired in a lot of different locations. You know, modern cars, they have torque to yield fasteners. Right. A lot of technology on how to keep all that stuff from shaking loose. Back in the day, they just, just put some wire through it and tie it up. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine on the assembly line, right? Because yeah. you're supposed to be spitting these things out. Some guy's in there trying to feed wire and yeah. twist them around. And, and it's amazing how these things were built. Well, we're going to remove these bolts here. And we're going to wrestle this guy and yeah. see if we can get it off without breaking a toe. <laughs> so let's get some cutters and yeah. looks like the right socket and pull that guy out. Ready? Yep. Let's get the starter out of the way. Okay, you got it? Yeah. All right. Wow. Cool. Okay. Let's flip this guy down. Now what you can see is we've got a big kind of cast iron flywheel and then yeah. probably a you know nice sort of semi-hardened steel uh, ring gear. And actually, That's this enough. is not sitting on here flush. It's kind of wobbled on there, so that might you know, account for why that starter and pinion aren't engaging right, so you probably don't have the right you know, engagement depth on there. All right, Pretty let's cool. get this stuff cleaned up. We've got a new clutch, we've got a new ring gear, yeah. we've got a new pilot bearing. We'll get this guy ready to go back together. Can't wait. Bam. Mm -hmm. All right, Kev, here we go. Wow, you can even see, look at that gap you were talking about. That should be seated up against yeah, the side of it. Yeah, it's not even seated, right? So it's like way out this direction. Some of these teeth are all gnarled up, chewed up. Yeah, definitely not put on properly and seated correctly. Ooh, Ooh look at this, ball peen hammer marks. Somebody was obviously pretty upset at this thing when they were trying <laughs> to get it. And some of that unevenness you were talking about yeah. uh, between the ring gear here, so. You know, it's not in the, you know, Chilton's handbook or anywhere else to install a ring gear with anger. You sure? And brute force. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do, you can see some of the shrapnel in here. Well, we're going to try to take this ring gear off a little more gracefully than yes. how it was put on. And we're going to use that caveman tool called fire. All we're going to do is work around this thing, get it nice and hot, let it expand. And because we've got it jacked up on blocks, hopefully the thing will just kind of drop right down so we know when it's fully cooked. Yeah! Uh, oh. The mighty fire! Nice. <laughs> nice. All right. Boom! All right, so a little hard to get off because of all the kind of mangling and stuff on there. We're going to check this out, make sure we can clean everything up, and um, slap the new one on. 
Okay, so we're back with our Model A, our 1928 Model A. We've already got the motor out of it, sent the flywheel off to get it resurfaced. And now we're going to take a quick look at some of the cool aspects of the old flathead that came out of this. Now, most people are interested in seeing a carburetor, used to seeing a carburetor on top of a motor. Not the case with this one. Check this out. <laughs> yeah, this is actually an updraft carburetor. You know, it's pretty low. You're normally thinking about a carburetor up here. And, you know, when we started the car, we talked about, you know, pulling the choke. And that's this butterfly right here. And back here, I mean, it, it seals pretty good. So when you do those, you know, intake strokes, you're not getting much air in. You're actually pulling the fuel in. That's getting everything primed. So that guy sits down here. You can tell this is sort of a Model B, not a Model A carburetor, because your inlet's coming from this direction versus coming in from the side. Kind of a little hot rod upgrade, make a little, <laughs> little more power. Upgrade. Yeah. 40 horsepower. Yeah. This is 40 plus now. Yeah. First, one of the first things you notice is this distributor. I mean, just look at the wires. These things are just Wire. blatant steel. Yeah. Actually, I've seen some of these use barbed wire before. Anything you basically had around the farm or the field well, yeah, or whatever. Back in the day, some hay, right? Some tree branches, <laughs> yeah, <bark>. barbed wire. <laughs> well, this guy is um, look inside. We know it's actually been modified kind of some 50s technology. We've got a point system in here. But even though this has been upgraded, this is getting a little bit sloppy. Yeah. So we're going to you know, rebuild this distributor, get the shaft you know, spinning nice and tight in there. So we'll go pull this guy out. Now, but before we do that, yeah. we want to find TDC so everything goes back in nice and clean. Yeah, one of the cool things they did was a timing pin, right? So you had this little pin from the factory. So you loosen this up, and you literally turn it around and put it in, there's a timing gear, cam gear in here. So you just insert this little guy here, and you wait to find that addition. You'll see it, it's just a recess into the timing gear, and you'll actually see this guy pop back out. So you know I got it, there's the sink. Yeah, see? we already kind of found it, you know, right before we started here, so. See that little indention? Just that little indention in that cam gear, timing gear, and you can tell right there, you got top dead center. So yeah. kind now of that, a cool little treat. That timing gear is driving the cam down here in the block, and this inspection cover you can see tappets, valves, yeah. the valve is actually upside Clear. down. It seals, you know, your valve job's actually in the block, not the head. Yeah. And the head just comes down, captures it in, makes the flat head. So let's go ahead and pull this nut here. I can break this guy loose. And loosen that nut a little bit. There we go. Wow. Yeah, I'd say that's a little worn. Okay, let's get this thing over on the bench. We got our distributor kind of pulling apart here. We've got our little point system. And we've got our wibbly wobbly little shaft in there. We're gonna replace the bushings on. So we can slide out the old guy, one piece design. We got the new one, which is two pieces with this little collar, little drive there. Now what we're gonna do is replace these bronze bushings. There's one sitting up at the top, one sitting here at the bottom. Now, good tip on how to get them out, you can take a quarter MPT tap. Newman, my buddy, showed me this one. Slide it in here. Give it a little crank until it bites into that bushing. Now you can take, you know, quarter inch extension, drive it out from the back side. Boop. And you can do the same thing with the other one. Now to get them in, we're going to take the new shaft. It's got a little collar right here, a little shoulder. We can slide that bushing on. And we can come over here and carefully t -t 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 drive that new bushing in from both sides. So we're kind of ready to rebuild this unit. Now one thing we did is we took a little aftermarket upgrade here. Now you can see the original shaft and this one here. Now if you look, there's a little hole drilled in there. Now that hole feeds down to this hole, which is where this bushing rides. So you got an oil can that you typically go around a lot of these old cars and you hit all these spots and oil them just to keep them running right. Well, now you got an extra spot that you can oil and you can keep that bushing lubricated so this thing will last a lot longer the second time around. Oh, that's perfect. That oh. thing's squared up nicely. You know? <laughs> hey, welcome back. Now, we took a little break while you guys were taking a break, had yeah. some brats, yeah. got a little lunch in us, and baked our ring gear nice and toasty. Yeah, we actually got this thing sitting on the grill, got a good toasty, all, uh, all cooked to uh, specs, 
and overnight we froze the flywheel actually added some dry ice to it this morning and uh as you saw it just dropped right on man made nice. it nice just sank right down there seated perfectly no this more. one's going to be a lot better than the last <laughs> mangled job no more ball peen hammer marks around the ring gear <laughs> so it should sit in there nice yeah. got the surface dialed in too yeah, and you can see we've got the pilot bearing in a nice cartridge sealed bearing you know no. maybe not like they used to do but <laughs> no so we've got the machined uh, surface there for the new clutch material. We've got the new clutch over here. So we're going to start assembling this thing, get it back together. Before you know it, that engine's going to be in the car, and we might just have to take it for a cruise. I'm all about that. Can't wait to hit that starter. I know. Starting to find her home. You know what, guys? I hope you learned a lot about the Model A. Yeah, some old school classic stuff. Yeah, a little bit about the early history of cars and how they work. And yeah. a lot of stuff looks just like it is today, almost.